And Malene and uh, Derek and Tristan and I went for breakfast this morning with a beautiful thing at the um, cafe on the water. And uh, there was these two beautiful white angels at the other table. <laughs> Una and Nada. But um, Malan came up with this beautiful metaphor, and this is what I wanted to share because I was thinking, well, Jesus spoke in metaphors all the time in his parables, and um, <clears throat> maybe if we just went from the other side with a story or an analogy, like a metaphor, it might also just help drill the forgiveness thing. So Malan said, well, and then also Susie's got one, so remind me of Susie's one as well, but um, just to come on another side. Uh, but the answer, well, okay, um, say you're wearing this beautiful white shirt, like the two angels over the other table, <laughs> and a fly comes and lands on the shirt. This is our forgiveness thought process metaphor. And um, do, you, do you swap the fly <laughs> and leave a nice stain on your shirt, which uh, Peter would laugh at all day? <laughs> or, or would you flip the fly off like Tristan did yesterday <laughs> with a march fly and, uh, and then today. hurt the poor march fly was a little bit hurt. He's <laughs> been my hero. <laughs> he was. Um, I'm just, you know, because that's the reaction, if you like, or the resistance to the fly and acknowledging its existence and reacting to it or doing something about it, trying to push it away. Or do you just leave the fly there and love it? <laughs> or or whatever. Um, and I wrote down in big letters, the biggest thing on my page, my many pages, was you know, forgiveness equals release. And I, I trust that's correct. Um, but maybe if we've got that problem with the word forgiveness, or we're not quite getting it, should we relate, uh, re sorry, um, replace the word forgiveness with release? Release. Um, because it just keep, I don't know if it's like this ego just stepping in all the time with mental amnesia again, you know, five minutes later, I got it, and then you sort of forget it, and you've got to go all over it again and try and remind yourself and stay mindful. It's getting down to the, the core of things because, um, yes, uh, I think uh, well, when Derek was sharing his revelation about his joining with, with Elfie and one more thought added on, would, would take away the experience that they were in. And then Raj shared with me, you want to just share a little bit about what you shared with me at the break? Because this really relates directly to this forgiveness process. Um, it, it occurred, what happened was I got up to go for morning, to put the morning tea on and to go in to bring out the bits. Sue followed me in and I gave her a hug. And while I was hugging her, I realized that I was completely one with her. And as we, as we sort of separated, I suddenly realized that in the moment that I would speak, she would have to interpret what I said, like Derek's words, would have to interpret what I said. And in that moment, the joining of oneness split into two, separated. And I was projecting my thoughts out there earlier and I realized that if I'm, oh, I, I was sitting here and I was feeling you all and feeling you all and I was totally integrated with the group. But the moment I focused my eyes on one person and identified that person in my mind, suddenly I was no longer in oneness. So if love is constant and only love is real, that has to be the place that we start. Like the, the temptation is to start from the other end. I mean the ego and all the other things and I've got to get to love. But let's just go and start with I am love, only love is real, only love is here, that's all that exists. Unless or until I choose to separate from it by either saying something which requires a response or by doing something which as a reaction or something. So I'm making the choice always to separate from a place of love. I love the fly analogy on the shirt. It suddenly reminded me of a really spiritual friend I have called Joshua who took me for a walk one day and we stopped on a building site and it's dusk. 
beautiful, the lights were all coming on on the Gold Coast. We're sitting there together side by side, and I can feel his bare arm because he's got no shirt on, and I've got a, uh, a t shirt on. And we're, we're, we're sitting so close that we're just like this. I can feel his thigh, I can feel his shoulder. We're kind of leaning to each other, and the mosquitoes are all over me. And I can't believe it. I mean, it's not just one or two, they're like everywhere. And I said, these mosquitoes are driving me nuts. I'm getting bitten to death and I'm swatting and doing all this. And Joshua's sitting there, he said, there aren't any mosquitoes. <laughs> and I look at him and he's got no clothes, but he's just got a pair of shorts on. And there's not a mosquito near him. And we're attached to each other. I've got the mosquitoes, he doesn't have any. I said, I don't understand. He said, let them go. He said, they're not real. They're just in your mind. And that's with the fly. So you're still trying to get rid of the fly or deal with the fly. Go back one step. There is no fly. Right? Where did the fly... My question to you is, where did the fly come from? From the mind. <laughs> somehow, somehow, at some point, I'm just using you, Frank, with this white shirt. Somewhere, the person wearing the white shirt for one second split away from being love, just being the white shirt, and the fly came in. Right? So then let it go. Does that not then just deny, though, if it was, say, the beautiful, slightly overweight people with Kirsten? You know, if you deny that the people are there, though, and you're saying, OK, those people don't exist, Say that. Well, isn't that the whole basis of the of the qu quandary of the course, isn't it? I, I, you know, only, yeah. Well, only I guess to refer real. then back to I asked David in Tilba, um, do you see them as your brother, or do you see them as not there? And I, at one stage in Tilba, there was this just think of love me stamped on their forehead. And I've just put two more words with that now: just trust me as well, love me and trust me. Trust me that I'm there to teach you something as well as just love you. Hand over the fly <laughs> to the Holy Spirit. And he removes everything in this process I wrote down the other day to clarify. He removes everything that is false, that I saw in idle dreams. And gives, gives me back only what represents truth. The white shirt. Well, they're talking about the fly though. <laughs> if there's, well, if there's truth in the, if there's any truth whatsoever in the fly, there's because we're talking about the fly, right. the white shirt was the backdrop, because I didn't want to hurt my backdrop. But, but isn't, isn't, the, isn't the white shirt love? Isn't that who you are? And then the fly is the, the thought for one minute that I'm separate. There is more than just, there's something other than love here, there's a fly. Yeah. Now there's a fly on the love, which is separate. Suddenly you split from only love, which is just the white shirt, to white shirt and the fly. Now you've got separation. It does relate to everything we're talking about. You know, as Suze talked at the very beginning about just that, that decision to all suffering is a decision to leave love. Then we're getting down to the real fine points with this perspective about the fly, using the metaphor of this shirt, white shirt and the fly. And I've done many talks over the years. I've, I've talked about a, a blue bottle cap. Um, we had a whole I had whole sessions on the blue bottle cap. Uh, let's try to go at salvation or enlightenment from the blue bottle cap. And really the fly on the white shirt is, is the same. So I want to read something from A Course in Miracles because this, I think you'll be able to begin to grasp the answer from these words from Jesus. He says, you live by symbols. You have made up names for everything you see. Each one becomes a separate entity, identified by its own name. By this you carve it out of unity. By this you designate its special attributes and set it off from other things by emphasizing space <coughs> surrounding it. This space you lay between all things to which you give a different name. All happenings in terms of place and time, all bodies which are greeted by a name. The space you see as setting off all things from one another is the means by which the world's perception is achieved. 